is an afterlife? I believe that's obvious from nature and science that there is an afterlife. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed. So if you are energy, then you can not be destroyed. You will have life after this mortal life. In Genesis, God said, he would give, he gives man the herb of the field that bears seed for food and medicine and seed for meat. Tobacco, nicotianum, is a Ayurvedic medicine. It is a nervine. It is a stimulant and appetite suppressant and is good for stress. I believe that good tobacco is a quality medicine, just like cannabis sativa was in the pharmacopoeia for thousands of years and is not toxic. Did you smoke marijuana? Sir, I said that my creed is Genesis, the Bible that God gave man the herb of the field. But not to smoke it. If you smoke it, it's going to clog up your lungs and you won't be able to breathe when you get older. Sir, I've smoked approximately 500 pounds of high-cost, low-quality filtered cigarettes over 37 years, and I'm not dead yet. Now, You're getting close. Now, what's going to happen after you die? Are you going to make it to heaven? Are you a good person? Sir, I believe that my salvation is sealed due to the fact that I have been chosen like a woman chooses a man to love him. So what do I have to do to be saved? What would you say to me if I was dying? I've got three minutes to live. How do I make it to heaven? What do you say? Just know that God is love, brother. Are you a good person? Sir, I'm a man, sir. And as a man, we have the ability to create with thought, word, and need. And if I go negative, sir, I pray for fire to burn every soul on the earth. I'm a bad man, sir. But it's God's grace, his unmerited favor towards man, that is the expression of that love. So to be saved, I have to acknowledge my sins. Jesus said, if I look with lust, I commit adultery in my heart. If you hate someone, the Bible says you commit murder in your heart. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, and all liars love their part in the lake of fire. God's justice is according to righteousness. The Bible says, behold the goodness and severity of God. On Judgment Day, God is going to be incredibly severe on sin. And so we need to repent and trust in Him who died on the cross, rose again on the third day because He took the punishment for the sin of the world. We broke the law, Ten Commandments, Jesus paid the fine, and rose from the dead and defeated death. And if we'll repent and trust in Him, not our goodness, but trust in Him alone, God promises to remit our sins. Is that correct? Sir, you presented it to me like it's a fact and ask me if I believe that it's correct. What I believe, sir, is that there is a need to recognize that universally throughout time and place that God is love. So do you think Darwin was right? I believe that there, Darwin is correct on some levels to take all the work of Darwin and to be able to say that all of it is right, like my last name, sir. I would say that much like me, sir, I'm right often, not always. What do you think of the words of Jesus? He said, in the beginning, God made them male and female. He didn't make primates. He made male and female, fully formed. That word in Genesis does not qualify. Uh, please ask the question again, sir. I lost my train of thought in relative to answering. Please repeat the question. And that's what marijuana does to you. It dulls the brain. Is that a fact, sir? Yes, sir. We said, as gentlemen, agree to disagree. Agree to disagree, sir. I will not argue or contend. You have a right to have your opinion, brother, and I have a right to have mine. Let me ask you a question, sir. Do you believe that God is love? Yeah, but to say he's love without saying he's justice and truth. God is love, yes, but... Yes, God is love, but... But he is also just and holy, and by no means clear the guilty. So to say God is just love is to create an idol, and if you create an idol, you won't fear him, and you won't turn from sin and trust in the Savior. So it's important to present the character and nature of God as revealed in Scripture, that God is just and holy, he's loving and merciful, and all that was revealed in the cross. Does that make sense? Sir, can I respond to that? Certainly. Yes, sir. Um, I believe that there has been... The Holy Scriptures, the one many are familiar with, is the King James Version, and that there was um, original transcripts in, I believe, Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, and I believe that it is not 
impossible for a man to correctly interpret and create a set of scriptures that are known as the inerrant word of God and that this dogma is can be very destructive when another man attempts to overpower one man and tell him that because you do not drink the same flavor of Kool-Aid relative to dogma, then that man is acting like a superior person to the other man and disparaging him, but God has created all men equal and each of us are entitled to pursue our path to God at our own unique way and to say that you sir are going to burn in hell is not my job if you do not believe and interpret the supposedly holy inerrant word of God. But what I do find in these scriptures, there are other versions. For example, the Catholic has the Apocrypha, and there's also the Gnostic teachings of Christ, and the lost books of Mary, for example, that you can still find that divine love and the light of God and knowledge is power. So do you think the eye evolved, or was it created by God? So there's, I believe, evidence in the creation of divine architecture or uh, divine uh, intelligent design. And I believe the eye is connected to the pineal gland. And in the more primitive animals, like a frog, it occurs on the top of the head. It is a light sensor that is connected to the eyes and controls the circadian room. And when you talk about these idols, sir, and graven images you're talking about, there's a billion of them on this smartphone, which is actually retarded, in my opinion, sir, because it's in fail mode half the time. And I believe it is what John the Revelator prophesied as the mark of the beast. It is in your hand. Bank Electronic Automatic Systems Transfer, B-E-A-S-T. And it goes into your forehead through your eyes, which are light sensors, and that it is your pineal gland, which is the center of your brain, where one side of your brain being emotion or the genetic predisposition to react to certain stimuli, and the other side being reason, and the two come together and give you what I call intelligence, which is divine light and love of God. And that's what makes you like God, is you have the ability to create with thought, word, and deed. Do you remember the question? The question was, is the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the is relative to the... Uh, Did the eye evolve? The eye evolved, you correct. The eye evolved, sir. I believe that when you look at the scripture in Genesis, there are milestones of evolution. And when God said, let there be light, I personally, in my opinion, believe that may refer to the milestone of the development in the, in the earthly terrestrial creatures of the eye. Now here's something that'll help you grow in your faith. Read the Word daily using this amazing one-year devotional, Jesus in Red. For more than 48 years, I've read the Bible every day without fail. I thought every Christian did that, but sadly, many don't. So get into a habit you'll never regret by reading the Word daily using this beautiful little devotional, 365 readings based solely on the words of Jesus. There's nothing like it. Get it through Amazon, livingwaters.com, or at your bookstore.